Welcome back, XRP Collective. XRP Lion 1 here. It's Wednesday night. What a day the Lord has shown. Hallelujah. We are seeing an implosion across all the markets. And this is exactly what I pointed out the other day. Crypto, as we know it, has a base fundamental purpose. It's not entertainment. It's about God's plan and his purpose to restore and recapitalize the central banks around the world. And what do I see today? I see another talking head trying to influence your view on what the justifiable value for gold is at $13,500. Well, the only thing I can say about that, and I'm being very mild and respectful, is it's a bunch of baloney. She says that all the debt created divided by all the gold that exists above and in the ground produces a value for gold of only $13,500. I have to say BS to that, and I'm being respectful. The value necessary for XRP as the world reserve currency to be backed by gold is $125,000 an ounce. And why is that? Because gold has to equal the value of XRP as the world reserve currency based upon all the global market debt. Created debt is not market debt. So let's get that straight right up front. Created debt. That's like looking at the Federal Reserve balance sheet and saying $9 trillion. We look at the global market debt and it's far beyond that. And you can go look at the report the case for XRP part 2 and 3 and it's all laid out right there. I ran some new numbers today and I modified the CARG the annual growth rate and the Lord said we are moving far beyond 8.5%. And that's what 125000 was based on in order to have all the money to insure, guarantee, secure for the next 32 years. That number went from 8.5% to 12.5%, a 4% increase per year. And many of you should be asking, well, Dave, why did it go up by 4% a year? Well, let's take a look at the factors that are going to make that true. We are seeing the largest expansion of God's blessing upon this planet ever for mankind in history. In history, people. 8,000 years laid up in heaven having been stolen by the enemy multiplied by seven and given to his chosen that is hundreds of trillions of dollars it's hundreds of trillions of dollars of buying power 
in our economy in the world that the likes that we've never seen. Now add to that $9 trillion just in the United States that's been locked up and tied up and prevented from being a viable money source in retirement accounts, 401ks, Roth IRAs, employee benefit programs. Everything that the old fiat currency system wanted to have access to so that it could kill and destroy. Its program was designed to steal the money from God's people every single day in plain sight. And what could we do about it? Nothing. I mean, think about it. After 2008, our financial system was was done. If it if it had not been for Big Ben, Ben Bernanke, in that conference meeting, identifying the fact that if they did not open up the floodgates to make uh, cash or, what's a better way to put this, financial resources available for the world, it was game over. And I remember that like it was yesterday. It came down to 30 minutes, people. 30 minutes from declaring the world bankrupt. They decided to do whatever it took to get to now. Was it right? We're not going to judge that. Was it necessary? Absolutely. Why? Because the hope for mankind moving forward had to be maintained. Because God already knew what was going to happen after 12 21 20 when that contract ran out with the devil and he took back control. He took back control of the world. Does that mean that that evil doesn't exist? No. What does it mean? It means that now God can remove evil from the world. And that's exactly what's happening right now before your eyes. Evil is being snuffed out to the point where he has already declared that this is his age and his time and his land. That's you and me. That's our heart. Humans humans are soil. And he's not taking the BS anymore. So what we're seeing is the last event that's necessary to take place for the full and entire restoration that God has already laid up in heaven since time began. He already knew this day was coming. He already knew what was necessary. He already knew how much money needed to be laid up in heaven. He already knew how much money the devil was going to steal. And he's now able to say, it's over. Evil is over. And what we're seeing is the final stage. Kind of like The plane is ready to go. Everybody's in their seats. They're buckled up. The stewardesses are in their seats. And the captain of the plane says, down the runway. Here we go. We're cleared for takeoff. We're on our way. 
And that's exactly what the Lord has been saying. Will it be pretty? I don't think so. It's going to be rough. It's going to have some rough edges. Are there going to be people that are financially destroyed? Absolutely. Why? Because they're not intended to receive and enjoy the benefit of his restoration going forward. And I'm just going to call it the way it is. He and I had a long discussion about this. And he was very adamant. I mean, I'm using a mild word when I say adamant. It will not be tolerated going forward if you're not in line with the Lord. Period. He's had me post breadcrumbs about this because I wasn't fully released to tell you what it really, 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 really looks like going forward. And there are going to be people that are horrified. They are going to think it's over for them. Well, I want you to know It's not. He has placed you and me strategically in a position to bind up the brokenhearted, to cover them with love and his grace as his sons and daughters on this planet, on earth, as ambassadors of love. Perfect love casts out all fear. When I use the word perfect, it means complete. His love is complete. His love renders fear useless. See, fear fear is false evidence appearing real. It's like what it's like going to the movie theater and watching a movie and you walk out and you go, "Wow, I'm really glad that was fake. It wasn't real." That's the enemy. The enemy brings up false evidence that appears real. Why? Because he knows people will connect with it because of how they've been programmed. So how do we get programmed? The moment we come out of the womb, we're this vulnerable being and our parents who do the best that they can instill the values that they received for the most part. And the process starts all over again. And God is saying, you know what? We're done with that. It's time to move on. It's time to receive the restoration. It's time to receive the glory. And it's time to be vehicles of love here and forever. Perfect love casts out all fear. People fear because of a false understanding of what they see. When you look at Jesus, what do you see? Do you see fear? When you press into the Lord, do you see fear? When you hear from the Holy Spirit, do you hear fear? You do not. You hear love, grace, praise, thanksgiving, wisdom, acceptance. Everything that that we are in his eyes. So now that it's his time, his land, none of that which was prior is even acceptable going forward. And I can't stress enough 
the importance of that. The importance of understanding that what was in the past for all of us is not our future. This isn't happening because he wants us to bring our old life into his new time. His revelation, his harvest. No. No, this is when he says, accept your royalty as my children, sons and daughters, and take that to the masses. This is a time that he has created for the expansion of our mind, the expansion of our soul, total restoration, total forgiveness, excuse me, and his complete love. But what are we going to see? We're going to see the financial markets taken to their knees, to zero. Bitcoin, zero. Ethereum, zero. XRP, zero. XLM, zero. Wall Street, zero. Why? Because you can't begin the restoration process until you've eliminated what was. And from that, Everything is new. See, he doesn't want our old system. He didn't lay all this financial blessing up in heaven beginning over 8,000 years ago, multiplied times seven, so we could just continue our selfish lives. And I include myself in that. I witnessed things in the last three days that were just appalling with people's attitudes about this blessing. It made me ashamed that God was going to bless them. It made me concerned that they saw this blessing as permission to be who they were in, in this sin condition world. And God is saying, absolutely not. And if that's what we think is going to happen, let me tell you, it's going to be a rude awakening. A very rude awakening. This is our, this is our time to relish in, in his amazing awesomeness and not make it about us. Nothing about us. Nothing. So please, don't think for a minute that we deserve this. That we had to live it out to receive it. No, that's not it. This blessing through the buyback and, and Nasara, Jasara is about the price that we had to pay to go through that pain, to be taken advantage of when there was nothing we could do to prevent it. But it's not permission to be that other person living in the world with its sin condition. I'm sorry that I have to bring this message. I really am. We went we we had a, a pretty heated discussion about this. But he said that we are all worth it. Every single one of us, every single person that is hearing this message, God has already said you are worth it. And that this event taking place right now 
with the crypto market and the stock market and everything else is to kill off the evil. And I don't mean just brush it aside. I mean exterminate it. Exterminate it. Like what the Lord told Joshua to do with the city of Jericho. What the Lord has told his warriors in events past. It's like, no, they are not part of what is to be now and in the future. Now what I want you what I want you to realize is that all of this is coming down now. And when I say now, I mean now. This implosion of the markets is required for the markets to come anew and move forward. I'm sorry that we all have to go through this, but it's necessary. And our response needs to be praise and thanksgiving to the Lord for what he has already done. And relax in the knowing that he has everything taken care of. So we don't need to be anxious for anything. We can rest. And remember, there's two types of rest. There's resisting every stupid thought. And then there's the kind of rest where we just chill. We hang out. We enjoy the time that we have without having an agenda. Where we can be with our family. We can be with our friends. We can just be hanging out. Now, there can be some limitations on that in terms of duration and perspective, but it doesn't lessen the plan and the purpose that the Father has already established. We're positioned to be that comforter for other people that don't know what's going on. that are panicking. You may be called by the Lord to be that one person that has a connection with somebody that at the end of the day keeps them from taking their life. You need to be aware of that. You need to be sensitive to that. You need to put your agenda aside and think about other people that don't have the wisdom, the knowledge, and the revelation that you have because you're you're hearing what the Lord wants you to know. So go boldly before the Lord, praising and thanking Him for what He has already done and that He has positioned you for a time like this. This all leads into the harvest. And oh, what a harvest it is. What a time for eternal revival. I mean, there are a lot of people out there, you know, talking about revival. They're talking about what used to be. They still haven't caught on that this is an eternal revival. It will not fade away like the revival of past has done. This is God's time. This is his land. And he is making the absolute most of it.
And he's not going to let anybody miss out or try to deviate from this. And oh, what a time. I mean, I'm so fired up over this. And that's how you need to be. People shouldn't see doom and gloom on you. They should see the spirit of the Lord, happy, rejoiceful, happy, 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 happier. Why? Because you have the power within you, because you're a son or daughter of the Almighty God, to give them the hope that they need to carry them through. Are people going to lose money? Sure. But it's just money. The plan is already there for the restoration. The forgiveness of the debt. All of the interest being repaid. Mortgages. Car loans. Taxes. I mean, if there was ever a time to be on earth, it's now. It's now, people. You heard me say the other day, 70 is the new 40. That's not a joke. With the technology for healing and medical restoration, off the hook. I can't wait to get into one of those med beds. The health insurance system has been nothing but a disappointment because all it cared about was money. Driving up the cost of insurance for self-employed people to the point where you just don't go to the doctor or you pay for it out of your pocket because of the astronomical cost of deductibles. But no more. No more. So we're going to see the complete collapse of the financial system because it has to collapse. Crypto. Stock market. Banking. But what comes out the other side? Love. Kindness. Prosperity. Restoration of everything, marriages, debt, forgiveness, family, relationships, love. Because at the end of the day, that's what we all want. We all want to be loved and feel loved. And we, and we want to reciprocate that with others. There's a love in a relationship with a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend that isn't the same as a mother or a father with a child and that it's different with friends and family. But it's all love. God is love. Einstein said that. He said, God is love. And he regretted not being able to spend the kind of time with his, his daughter. It's a beautiful letter he wrote. You should read it. It's his biggest regret. So what do we do? What do we do going forward? We prepare. We make sure that we have food and things that we need to take care of us. We make sure that there's gas in the car. But we mentally prepare ourselves to 
step out, hunker down, just like we do when we hold our crypto, and we let God do what God does so best. And be okay with it. Are we going to see some things that are horrifying when we come to understand the truth? Man, off the chart. Most people won't want to know. But if you don't know, you don't know what God has done. So just get ready. God's been preparing. For this for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years we've been here such a short time and we think we're in control no we're not we're just a participant oh actually we're actually more of a I don't want to use the right word here Onlooker to the amazing things that God has already done. And then we choose what we want to participate in and that which fits who we are. We'll just throw all that out. Throw it out. Because that model doesn't work anymore. The model going forward is God is our, our amazing Father in heaven. Jesus paid the price so that we could be redeemed because of our sin nature in this world with a sin condition. We regained the, the indwelling of God's spirit so we could be connected to him directly. We could commune with him directly. We could ask things of the Holy Spirit with the guarantee that the Holy Spirit would return with an answer from God. God has laid up the provision for our entire life. What are we complaining about? What don't we have that we want? <laughs> With this blessing, there will be nothing that you don't have the power to have because God already knew it was necessary. Think about that. There are people right now that have wished for something their entire life. Whether it was an RV vehicle, it was a watch, it was a dress, it was a bicycle, it was a car, it was a house. You know, material stuff. But what about the people that have just asked for relationship with their family? See, and that's got a kitty wampus today. People want relationship on their terms which means control. But are they willing to just sell out and not make relationship about what they want in the relationship, but what the relationship is all about? See, that's the rub for most people. We're, we've been driven to succeed, to push forward for success. See, and success is nothing more than being able to have people point to you and say you're special. You have more value than other people. When in fact, most people don't even know the value of the people around them. You know, kids don't ask their grandmothers and grandfathers about their life. Because they, they're not they're not interested. But yet you'd be amazed at how much life a grandmother or grandfather have lived. What they've come across, what they've learned, whether it was mistakes or successes. I mean, sit down with your grandmother or grandfather. And just tell them you want to hear about their life. 
You talk about an exciting story, man. Get ready. Bring a recorder. Set up multiple sessions. Because you're going to learn things about them that you never thought were possible. And you're going to be able to carry all that forward. Versus, yeah, I got my own stuff to do. You li- I have no idea what you did in your life. Nor do I care. That's a huge disappointment for a grandmother and grandfather. Because they pour themselves out to love their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. And they would sacrifice their life for any of them. But those people, those family members, don't even have a second thought about throwing them under the bus. And it's really too bad. It really is. And it's something I would encourage everybody to spend time making better. Because at some time you're going to find yourself there. And you're going to find out how lonely it is when they don't care about you being in their life but you're there all the time they don't even see you they walk right past you in a room at church but then when birthday times and Christmas come around they're the first ones that want to know where's my gift, where's my present see God's getting rid of all of that selfishness that self idolization. So we redefine our focus, and our focus is on Him. He's our Creator. It's His breath that started our lungs. He's the one that created our DNA, how we're wired. And everybody's different in their own special way. And now we get to enjoy that. We get to explore that because we have the time to do it. And it's exciting because now, like I said, 70s the new 40. 80s the new 50. 90s the new 60. And it could be even more extended than that. So we're we're at a time where we are on the precipice of a love expansion like we've never seen. And it, it, and it's true. And when I say it's true, I mean it's not manufactured. It comes f- from within us. And of course, we all know, you know what that manufacture, manufactured love looks like. It's not sincere. Whereas this this eternal revival, it never goes away. You can't stop thinking about those people around you. So we are in for some incredible, absolutely incredible things in our future. And I say that because I don't want you to dwell on a very short period of time that we're going to have to go through right now. That isn't going to be like what you're used to. Whatever that routine is, it's coming to a halt. I mean, I never thought that when we were locked down on that cruise ship that it would be the way it was. I mean, five or six days in, you're like, what day is it? All you wanted to know was there were food available. You could watch what you wanted to on TV and you just relaxed. And then having to go through it all over again when we 
were taken to Lackland Air Force Base. That was worse than the cruise ship. Because we didn't have the comforts. I mean, they literally had the air conditioning system shut down. And it was 80 degrees outside. We came from 35 degrees to 80 degrees with no air conditioning. And that doesn't fly for somebody who has lived in the Pacific Northwest for 20 plus years. But you know what it did? It got me to slow down, to realize what was going on, and praise and thank him for every single day. Now there's a lot coming down. Just get ready. Be flexible. Be obedient. But be his love for those around you. Be the encourager. Be the one that says, you know, we're going to get through this. This isn't so bad. Wait till you see what, what happens. And if you want to share with them what you know, do it. Does it mean they're going to believe you? No. But that's not what it's about. It's not about them believing you. It's about them accepting the fact that God's already taken care of everything and they can relax. It's happening now. Relax. Praise and thank him. And if he wants to release any more information about this, believe me, you'll be the first ones to know. You can guarantee that because why? That's why I'm here. I needed to be moving my crypto and redirecting it and pointing it to the XRPL. I chose to forego that for this message right now for you guys because the Lord helped me understand that was the priority. We'll get this other stuff taken care of tomorrow in no time. He loves you. He adores you. Your sons and daughters and never forget that. So with that, I thank you, I bless you, and I hope to be able to share more with you in the future. God bless.